Good day to you. This is Pastor Joey Pagadora and this is Senior Moments to Remember. Thank you for joining us today. It is always a pleasure to have you with us. And thank you for sharing your life as we have a wonderful time coming to the Lord, reading His Word, worshiping Him, and praying. We want to thank you so much also for telling your friends about our program and letting them also be encouraged as you have been encouraged. Now, before we start, we'd like to ask if you have any prayer requests, please type them in the comment section below. Or if you want to say hi to your friends or relatives anywhere around the world, give them a shout out. And also let us know where you are at. It is always awesome to hear from you. Let's open in prayer. Father, I lift up to you our time together. I pray for your hand to be upon Tatay and upon Nanay. I thank you so much, Lord, that all of your promises are yes and amen through Jesus Christ. And I thank you that even right now, you are at work in their lives to bring, Lord, all that they are going through into good. Turning things around, Lord, making them good. You are that God, and no one can do that the way you can. So we lift up to you, si Tatay and si Nanay, and we pray, Father, that your presence will be with them. Let your Spirit pour out on them, O God, and even as we spend this wonderful time together, edify them, Lord, strengthen them, O God, wrap them around in your arms with love. I lift them up to you. Bless our time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's come to the presence of God and worship Him. Good morning. Come and join me in worshiping our wonderful God. Moments to remember. Moments to remember. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Moments to remember. Moments to remember. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the cause of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age, they will stay fresh and green to proclaim the Lord is upright, He's my rock, and there's no wickedness in Him. Moments to remember, moments to remember, moments to remember. To remember, moments to remember. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up. Till I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire, and in darkest night, you are close like no other. I know you as a father, I know you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful, all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. 
Your goodness is running after, is running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing of the goodness of God Amen Moments to remember A blessed day to you this is Pastor Joey and this is your wow moment Wow meaning words of wisdom. And we know that wisdom is important to you because you have lived it. You have proven it. And now you are enjoying the fruit of wisdom in your life. Our wow moment for this week is taking a look at Paul's different teachings to a young man named Timothy of what he will be teaching also to the young people in his church. And at the same time as we draw out those principles, we would like to grasp truths that you can also pass on to your young people, to the next generations of your family, maybe to your apo, or maybe to your apo sa tuhod. So now, we would be reading in 1 Timothy chapter 3, and we will start in verse 14. I hope to come to see you soon, but I am writing these things to you, so that if I delay, you may know how one ought to behave in the household of God which is the church of the living God, a pillar and buttress of the truth. Great indeed, we confess, is the mystery of godliness. He was manifested in the flesh, vindicated by the Spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed on in the world, taken up in glory. Now today, we want to talk about this little word that Paul taught Timothy, and it's a word called godliness. Godliness is what describes the behavior of Christians who are part of the church, part of the household of faith, as Paul puts it. You may know how one ought to behave in the household of God. So godliness is what fits us as part of God's family and part of God's household we are taught to make it a goal, in fact, of our life to live a godly kind of life. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, For kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. Godly in every way, meaning every situation. Godly in every relationship. Godly in every activity. In every part of our life, godliness permeates. It is not just something that we put on when we go to church. Godliness is something that we have with us 24-7, just like we have God with us 24-7. We are taught that this is also what Jesus wants us to be. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age. So when we got saved, we became part of God's family. We were transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, to the family of Satan, to the family of God. And because of this, there is a change in our behavior. There is a change in who we are. And that is why if you've seen somebody dress up in a way that's just not fitting, all right? 
it may not be totally wrong, but even if it's just not fitting, you see it right away, right? In the same way, a Christian behaves, a Christian lives, a Christian dresses, speaks, acts in a way that is fitting, being part of the household of God. Have you seen a 70-year-old man dressing up like one of the hip teenagers? Maybe a 70-year-old man wearing these super skinny, skinny jeans and the jeans don't even reach all the way to the ankles. And then maybe the hair is all standing up, colored, and maybe the shirt is folded in the sleeves and the front is open. And maybe the shirt, half of it is tucked in and the other half is untucked. And maybe he has all of these different bracelets or watches that are multicolored and maybe carrying a backpack that's also full of maybe buttons or um, pins, just trying to look like a teenager. Is there anything wrong wearing clothes like that? No, but it's not fitting. It's just not fitting. So in the same way, Christians, when we behave, when we speak, when we act, there is a certain behavior that is described as fitting for a Christian. When God saved us, God washed us. His grace came upon our lives, changing the way we behave. And that is why when we become a Christian, sin is not going to be part of our lifestyle anymore. It does not fit us. It doesn't belong to our norm. Again, Titus chapter 2, verse 12. What does it say? The grace of God is training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age. The grace of God teaches us to say no and to renounce ungodliness. While the world in media teaches that it's okay and expected of young men to be testing, trying out sex before he gets married, that's not part of our behavior. Your young people are called to be godly. Your young people are now part of a household where premarital sex is not a norm, where alcohol is not a norm, where cigarettes is not a norm where pornography is not a norm because in our household, with God, we live a holy life. And the grace of God teaches us, the grace of God teaches your young people how to avoid them, teaches your young people how to say no. The godliness that God is expecting in their lives is something that they can also learn. Whatever new situation might come in. Many, many years ago, maybe when you were young, internet was not around yet. So there's no pornography on the internet. There's no pornography on the phone. These things are coming up new in this generation. And maybe you're not familiar with it. You're not used to it. But you see, the grace of God is with your young people. And the grace of God also teaches your young people how to avoid all these things even though these things may come out as new that grace of God teaches them still how to avoid such things how to say no you may not be able to teach them but the grace of God sure can so point them to God the head of our household point them to God who will be teaching them how to behave. Point them to God who will surely lead them to a life that is holy so that your young people will live a stable, live a strong Christian life all the way, even when you have gone ahead and gone home to heaven. This has been your wow moment and our prayer for you is that as you continue in wisdom, the days, the weeks, the months, and the years ahead of you will even be more fruitful. 
God bless you. Hello, wonderful exemplars. This is Pastor Paula, and welcome to another Sababa moment. For today, we will continue our journey to Cana in Galilee. So, did you know that Cana in the Roman and Byzantine period, around 1,000 to 2,000 years ago, there was a large community in Cana. But apparently, by the Mameluk period, about 800 years ago, most of the residents in Khifar Kena were Christian. Although there was still a Jewish community here too, okay, today most of the residents of Khifar Kena are Muslim. In the center of the village are few remains of ancient buildings and burial caves. The villagers have built new houses to the southeast and northeast of the ancient village. The most important site in the village is the Catholic Church, built in 1879 and on the traditional site of the miracle of the wine. Beside this church is the Greek Orthodox Church of St. George, built in 1886, which houses two stone jars that Greek Orthodox followers believe are the jars in which Jesus performed the miracle of the wine. There is also a church named after St. Bartholomew, built according to tradition on the site on, of the home of Nathaniel of Cana. So St. Bartholomew, one of Jesus' disciples. And did you know that in that Catholic church that we were talking about earlier in Cana in Galilee, we always happen to meet one Filipina nun over there and she would always greet us with a smile and she would always have a nice laugh with us because you know she thinks it's nice to talk in Tagalog because there are Filipinos there and uh, before we were uh, doing our wedding ceremonies or renewal of vows for the couples in that church but last year February 2020 we had the privilege of doing our marriage renewal of vows in this Christian church, the only Christian church in Cana. And we will talk more about that next episode. So for today, let us look at what happened again, what miracle or signs and wonders happened again in Cana in John chapter 4, verses 46 to 54. If you have your Bible with you, please open it and read it with me. It says there, Once more, he visited Cana in Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. And there was a certain royal official whose son lay sick at Capernaum. When this man heard that Jesus had arrived from Galilee, from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son who was close to death. Unless you see signs and wonders, Jesus told him, you will never believe. The royal official said, Sir, come down before my child dies. Go, Jesus replied, your son will live. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. While he was still on the way, his servants met him with the news that his boy was living. When he inquired as to the time when his son got better, they said to him, Yesterday, at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. Then the father realized that this was the exact time at which Jesus had said to him, Your son will live. And so he and his whole household believed. This was the second sign Jesus performed after coming from Judea to Galilee. Wow. What's amazing here is that this royal official took Jesus at his word. So Jesus was like telling him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will never believe. But that royal official's faith is something. He really believed. Even before he sees signs and wonders, he believed that Jesus is the only one who can heal, heal his son. So he believed his word when jesus said go your son will live and he realized at that exact same moment his son received the healing that he has been praying for 
know what, my dear exemplars, if we are going to trust God, let us trust Him wholeheartedly. If God has promised us something through His Word, and He has clearly stated in His Word that He is going to do something in your life of what you ask for or imagine, all we have to do is to take Him at His Word. Trust and believe Him and obey whatever He tells us. Just like what we uh, tackled last week, all you have to do is to do whatever He tells you. And whatever He tells you, whatever He says in His Word, He will do it. Because he who promised is faithful. And when God says it, you can depend on it and you have to believe it because he's going to do it. Amen? Isn't he Sababa? Thank you so much, exemplars, for listening and for enjoying another Sababa lesson today here in our Sababa moment. I am hoping to see you again next episode. This is Pastor Paula. God bless you all. Bye! Psalm 91, New Living Translation Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust Him, and I trust Him. For He will rescue you from, from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with His feathers. He will shelter you with His wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plaque will come near your home. For He will order His angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. Good morning! Welcome to Golden Hour. I'm Pastora Babes. It's time to sing along with me. Come on, let's sing. His name is wonderful.
Accompanied by tambourine and harp. Come and dance along. With all joy, now I overflow and over. In the Holy Ghost, of joy, 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 you live in our chains of joy, and the blessing of our Lord God. Of joy, of joy. What a joy to be with you today. Stay fit for service. God bless. Moments to remember. Hello, I'm Pastor Latin Gachalian and welcome once again to our prayer time. Thank you so much for always allowing us to be part of your life 
every time you share with us your prayer request. It's always a great joy to pray for you and see your prayers being answered. So how do we pray? Fervently and with joy. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your presence today and we are always grateful, O God, because we know that you are an ever-present help in times of our needs. That every time we come before your presence, every time we cast our cares before you, we know, O God, that you will always be there for us because you care for us. Lord, thank you because even right now, as we commit to you the needs of your people, you are creating miracles in their lives. For Sister Lita Evidente, Father, thank you for your hand of protection over her and her whole household, her family, and all the seniors out there. Thank you, Jesus, that you will keep them far and free from any kind of sickness, that you will keep this COVID, O God, far from them, that you will not allow this deadly pestilence to come near their dwelling place in Jesus' name. Thank you also, God, for Sister Jocelyn Benedicto. Father, we pray for her brother, Brother Jesse, for the blood pressure to be normalized. Thank you, Father, because we know that by the wounds of Jesus, Brother Jesse has been healed. And we also thank you, God, for Sister Lina. God, we ask that your hand of grace and blessing will continue to be upon his grandson, Pat, and his family. Thank you, Lord, for the protection for his household that this Deadly pestilence, O oh God, will not come near them, that you will keep them free and far from any kind of sickness or disease. Thank you also, God, for a stable source of income for the family. Thank you for blessing the work of their hands and for continuously prospering, Lord God, the whole household. Even Father, the wife of Brother Pat, I'm praying for Micah for complete restoration of her health and continuous healing and strength. Father, we pray as well for the daughter-in-law of Sister Lina, for Amor. Thank you, God, for good health and for continuous blessings and protection over her family as well. God, bless her online business and continue to let the heaven be open for her family, God, that all their needs will be met according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And also, Father, for Sister Lydia Collis, thank you, God, for her sister Caridad and her family in North Carolina. Father, we ask that you will bless them with divine protection and that you will always bless and prosper the work of their hands. Thank you also, God, for Sister Julianne and her family in U.S., that you will also keep the whole household far from any kind of sickness, that, God, they will enjoy good health and long life in your presence. Also, God, for Justine and Chester, that they will continue, Lord God, in their spiritual walk, in their spiritual growth, oh God, in Australia, that your grace will be seen in their lives. And finally, Lord, you will always keep Sister Lydia healthy, strong, and enjoying your protection every step of the way. And lastly, Father, for Sister Merlita Bernardino, Lord, thank you for providing for all her needs, for blessing her family, Lord God, and for your divine protection as well. Thank you, God, that wherever they go and whatever they do, your angels will always be guiding their ways. Thank you also, God, for her grandson, Elaine. Thank you, Lord, that you will also bless this young man with good health and that God, he will experience, he will enjoy your protection. We give you praise and we give you honor for all these prayer requests that will be answered because of your faithfulness. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope to see you again tomorrow for another time of prayer. Moments to remember Thank you so much for joining us today. It has been a pleasure to have you and we're looking forward to having the pleasure of having you join us again tomorrow for another episode of Senior Moments to Remember. Now before we go, we'd like to ask again, if you have any prayer requests, please type them in the comments section below. Now you might say, Pastor, I'm not very good in engaging or in making comments in YouTube or Facebook or whatever platform you may be watching us through. Well, maybe you have your grandchildren close by and tell them to type in the message for you. We would always be considering it an awesome favor and an awesome privilege to be able to hear from you and to be able to pray for you. We believe that God works things out for the good of those who love Him. So let's close in prayer. Father, I lift up to you si Tatay and si Nanay. I pray, O God, for my brother and for my sister that even as they go on their way today, let your presence lead them, order their steps, 
Let them be so productive, O oh God. And I pray, Father, that even as they stay home, maybe with their families, not only with their children, but also their grandchildren, for those who even have the great-grandchildren with them, let Tatay, let Nanay be a source of wisdom for these young ones. Let them hear, Lord, the wisdom that you have poured out upon Tatay and upon Nanay, that they may also learn. Father, I pray that this day will be so productive, that this day, Lord, will have a lot of good things happening. You will bless the work of their hands, just like what you said, and just like what you promised. As their days are, so shall their strength be. I lift them up to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, and we'll see you again tomorrow for another episode of Senior Moments to Remember. Moments to remember Moments to remember Moments to remember